Greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St. Luke's Uniting Church in Heighton. Last week, we celebrated the uh, Feast of Christ the King, which marks the end of the church's liturgical year. And this week, we begin the church's year as we begin the season of Advent. Over the four weeks of Advent, we will be reflecting on the four themes of hope, peace, joy and love, and lighting Advent candles to mark each of these themes. On Christmas Day, our theme will be faithfulness, God's faithfulness to us and our faithfulness to God. As someone said to me recently, hope, peace, joy and love, these are themes that we really need to be looking at in these difficult days. So this week, we look at hope and we remember that hope is found in Christ and hope is required for us humans to, to truly live. As we begin this video service, let's pray. God of faithful love, ever resourceful, ever merciful, we draw near to you because you first have drawn near to us. You create the longing in our souls, the love in our hearts and the faith which delivers our whole being from frustration. May our actions honour you, our words praise you, our thoughts marvel in you, and our spirits utterly adore you. Through Jesus Christ, who comes again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Amen. This year we have this wonderful Advent uh, wreath that's been made for us again by Dorothy Bath. Traditionally, the Advent wreath, and you might like to make one at home for yourselves, consists of a wreath of evergreen, one central candle that's white, representing Christ, and four other candles, three purple and one rose or pink, that are lit during the period of Advent. This week, the first week in Advent, we're lighting the candle which represents hope, the hope we have in Christ. During Advent this year, we're using some prayers that come to us from Caritas, Australia. Let's pray. God of light and hope, as we light our Advent candle today, guide us to be a people of hope in our thoughts, actions and words with everyone we meet. We say this prayer and light this candle in the name of Christ. Amen. The first of today's readings comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah. It is generally thought that the context for the writing of this particular passage was a situation in which the people of Israel had returned from exile in Babylon and then things had started to go badly. And so the people are despondent and in an extended prayer of lament, the prophet calls out to God to act to save the people. The second reading is part of a section in Mark's Gospel in which Jesus speaks to his disciples about various tragedies that would befall Israel and his disciples, including the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. He also speaks about the promise of his own return and how in the meantime his followers are to remain true to their calling to share his good news in word and deed. They are not to fall asleep. A reading from Isaiah. قراءة من سفر أشعياء. ليتك تشق السماوات وتنزل فتتزلزل الجبال من حضرتك فتكون كالنار التي تضرم الهشيمة وتجعل المياه تغلي لكي تعرف أعداءك اسمك فترتعب الأمم من حضرتك عندما أجريت أعمالا مخيفة لم نتوقعها. نزلت فتزلزلت الجبال من حضرتك منذ الأزل لم يسمع أحد ولم تصغي أذن ولم ترى عين إلها سواك يجري ما تصنعه للذين ينتظرونك A reading from Mark 13 verses 32 to 37 
قراءة من إنجيل مرقس وأما ذلك اليوم وتلك الساعة فلا يعرفهما أحد لا الملائكة الذين في السماء ولا الإبن إلا الآب فانتبهوا واسهروا لأنكم لا تعرفون متى يحين الوقت فالأمر أشبه بإنسان مسافر ترك بيته وأعطى عبيده السلطة معينا لكل واحد عمله وأوصى حارس الباب أن يسهر إذا اسهروا لأنكم لا تعرفون متى يعود الرب البيت أمساء أم في منتصف الليل أم عند صياح الديك أم صباحا لأن لا يعود فجأة ويجدكم نائمين وأما أقوله لكم أقوله للجميع اسهروا I was listening the other day to a podcast of a conversation between Philip Adams and the writer Don Watson. Philip likes to parade his atheism, and I don't know where Don Watson fits in as regard to matters of faith. But Watson made a very interesting observation which I've been reflecting on ever since. He said, in his view, there is a difference between hope and optimism. He was somewhat disparaging of optimism as something that can be quite shallow. He used as an example, political leaders who speak in effectively empty optimistic terms by saying things like, it's all going to be fine. This COVID-19 thing will come to nothing. We're on top of it. When clearly things are not going to be fine, this COVID-19 thing's gonna last a long time. And in fact, things may get worse. While not exactly defining hope in the interview, Watson made clear that he saw hope as something far more grounded and significant than this kind of empty optimism. Now, I need to make a confession at this particular point. I tend to be someone who always looks for the silver lining in the dark cloud. And hence, when I was at Wesley Uniting Church, the folk there created a version of a famous song by the Monty Python team, which the group there thought was apt for me. And of course, you know what the chorus was, don't you? Always look on the bright side of life. But I do agree with Watson that in the end, it is hope that is the thing that is so important for traversing the storms and vicissitudes of life and even the day-to-day -day monotony of life. The words we heard from the prophet Isaiah create such a vivid image when you think about them, don't they? The prophet calls out to God to tear open the heavens and to come down, to come and help the people of Israel right now, right at their point of need. And the Christian word about hope is that God has done just that in the person of Jesus. God has come amongst us in the person of Jesus we are not alone. The struggles of life are real, but we are not alone to face them. Christ has come amongst us. Christ is with us, and Christ will come again. If you go away and read the whole of chapter 13 of Mark's Gospel, and you heard Shagig read a short section from that chapter, you will see that Jesus was not promising those who follow him an easy road that they would, we would, face many, many challenges and terrible things. But he assures them, and therefore he assures us, that in the end, it is his word, his way, that will prevail. For Christians then, our hope, not our optimism, but our hope is grounded on something really tangible, the person of Jesus. We're able to proclaim his way as a way that offers genuine hope. And as we will affirm over the next three weeks, we will also affirm that his way is the way of genuine peace, genuine joy, and genuine love. Nature 
wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Let's share again in prayer. This prayer is adapted from a prayer written by Richard Ennison. Let's pray. Holy and steadfast God, we acknowledge that over the generations your people have not remained steadfast. That too often the human response to you has been punctuated by ups and downs, sins, transgressions and wanderings. So as we begin our Advent journey, we come before you with humility. And we confess that like many who have gone before us, our zeal and ardour in being faithful sometimes wanes. We confess that too often we stray from your way. We confess that sometimes we become insensitive to the needs of our sisters and brothers. We confess that we live as though you were far away from us. Help us in these times to continue to make our claim upon you and to know that you have claimed us in Jesus Christ. Help us to embrace the forgiveness and new life you offer in Christ. Holy One, you are always and ever present. May we seek to really be open to your ministry to us in this Advent time. May we know your hope, your peace, your joy and your love which you bring to us in Jesus and hover over all those regions of human dysfunction, pain and suffering that are occurring in our world today. Especially be close to those people and places where there are really deep needs that are known to us. Bring healing. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As you go into the first week of Advent, may Jesus Christ, who is coming again in power and great glory we await, empower you to be steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Sugar gliders dance between branches overhead through the tangle of trees. And the night birds look on while the echoes of song carry softly away on the breeze. And the children climb down from the water tank as we bid farewell under the stars. We look back. We hold this place in our hearts And the sun lights the trees through the windows As it makes its way over the hill And the sun